What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk and today we're doing a side-by-side -side with Sony's new HDR AS100V against GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition with the new firmware 2.0. So let's get out there. Yeah. Everyone, my name is Mark Hawk and today we're doing a quick look. I know there's people watching me, this is, it makes this slightly terrifying. You can use any of these quick links to jump to a section you're most curious about or just sit back and we'll start playing them all in a few seconds. Now this video is going to mainly cover the video and audio differences, though we will touch upon some of the features a little bit here and then go deeper into them in another video. Both of these cameras are going to be filming at 1080p, 30 frames a second in their equivalent Pro Tunes mode throughout the entirety of this video. Now for the Sony, that's referred to as the XAVC-S mode, but on the camera it's just called Pro Mode, and on the GoPro you're going to know it as Pro Tunes. Now Pro Tunes has changed a little bit since the last time we looked at it. You can actually apply the same color grade that you do when you're filming normally, so it doesn't have to always be that sort of flat lens. So what we're actually looking at right here is actually the normal GoPro color mode versus the Sony's uh, Vivid color mode. So as you probably noticed right away, the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition, even with the firmware 2.0, still has that sort of red tint to the footage. Um, so from here on out, I'm just going to assume this is working as intended. I've tried everything from changing up the white balance to just leaving it on auto, and that's what it is throughout the entirety of this, vi of this video. It's on auto mode. The Sony, however, has this really, really nice sort of uh, vivid color mode, they call it. It's just a sort of natural look. Um, I would say the color of this day was somewhere probably in the middle of these two. is a little more hazy, not as greatly saturated as it is on the Sony, but it's definitely a more appealing look. And if we want to look at sharpness though, take a look at that tree in the bottom right, especially when we zoom in here. Uh, you can see the branches on the bottom right on the GoPro version are much sharper, there's a lot more detail there. It's a little muddier on the Sony camera, but it's really not bad at all. And you start looking at the skyline, you know, we've always talked about the, um, the depth of field being an issue on the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition. I don't really see it as being an issue here, I feel it's just as sharp as the Sony, if not a little more, and I think it looks good. Other than that red tint, that kind of sucks. So what we have here is sort of an example of the maximum uh, resolution quality you can get with a usable frame rate. So with the Sony, we have 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second, and with the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black, we have 2.7K at 30 frames a second. Now we could go up to 4K with the GoPro, but that's only going to get us 12 frames a second, and if we want 60 frames a second, we could definitely drop it down to 1080p as well. So out of this next shot, there's going to be a lot of information we can pull from it. With the Sony camera, we're going to start to look at some of uh, how it handles lens distortion. And with the GoPro, we're going to look a little bit more at the depth of field and the sharpness compared to the Sony camera. But overall, I feel like the red tint color is working here for the GoPro. But again, I really wish it wasn't there. So let's start by taking a look at these bushes in the foreground here. They're really sharp on the GoPro. I really like how we can see a lot of the details and just the leaves and everything like that. And if we hop over to the Sony, it's it's a little muddy. It's not super bad, but it's just a little muddier. And if we start to kind of go a little further into the background, we're going to start seeing some grain pop up. So we'll kind of just zoom in here for a second. Um, this is blown up to 250%. You can kind of see the grain on the Sony just sort of popping up in some of the lighter areas, a little bit harsher than on the GoPro. But the edges on the mountains are just like really nice and sharp on the GoPro. It looks really nice, but you know, again, both shots look pretty good. Again, here we're just looking at the sharpness and the sort of depth of field we're kind of getting off these objects. So we have something that's a little more closer to the camera, but then raises straight up into the sky. So we'll just take a look at the sharpness and stuff like that. But overall, both cameras handle it really well. Now the next section is going to cover how each camera handles recording audio. Now each camera is set up in its most ideal situation, neither of them are in cases, and we're just going to sort of see how each one tends to pick up audio around them. So, 1080p, 30 frames a second, both with your equivalent Pro Tunes, and you're both in your sort of default color mode. So for the Sony, that's Vivid, for the Hero 3, that's GoPro Color. Creative name. Okay, so. 20 seconds in. So, 1080p, 30 frames a second, both with your equivalent Pro Tunes, and you're both in your sort of default color mode. So, for the Sony, that's Vivid. For the Hero 3, that's GoPro Color. Creative name. Okay, so, 20 seconds in. Put this here. I'll just say real fast, the quality coming off Sony's AS100V is really impressive. Like it sounds a lot 
better if not comparable to some of the road mics and professional mics that I pay for coming right off a $300 camera. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the GoPro still sounds great up until now. I, I thought it was definitely top of, uh, top of the line, but compared to the Sony's it sounds a little muffled, but what are you going to do? So again, we're here looking at both cameras in their high bitrate format at their default color modes. With Sony, that's the Vivid, and with the GoPro, that's GoPro color mode. And with the GoPro, I feel like we're getting a lot more detail. We're getting a lot more detail in the grass. We're getting a lot more detail in that dome. But the, the color is just sort of kind of ruining that. The GoPro feels a little overexposed, but with the new firmware 2.0, we could actually go in there and lower the, um, the exposure manually and bring it down a stop or two, which might have helped. But for this test, we were kind of trying to keep everything auto. So again, look at that dome. I don't know if this is going to come through in YouTube after compression, but that dome has a lot more detail on the Hero 3 Plus, while on the Sony, again, it looks good, but it's a, it's a little muddy in comparison. But if we look at things kind of in the middle, like that sign right there, they're both identical on each camera other than color. Sharpness-wise, detail-wise, they look almost the same. So this is actually kind of a different shot. It's the same scene, but what we've done is we've uh, activated both cameras neutral or flat mode. So with the Sony, this is its neutral mode that you can use to color grade yourself later. And with the GoPro, that's the flat mode that you're kind of used to when you're originally filming in Pro Tunes. Now we'll kind of switch back and forth between these two so you can see the difference. So here we have flat neutral mode, GoPro color mode, and vivid mode. Flat mode. Back to Sony's Vivid and GoPro's GoPro Color Mode. Now you kind of get the idea, when you're filming in neutral or flat, it's so you can color correct later. So we're going to lose some of the saturation and the contrast just so you have more control later. So we tilt this camera up and down, uh, pay attention to the edges of your screen. You're going to see how the distortion is actually working. So if you look at that shadow in the middle of the screen by the light pole, as we go down you're going to see it get straight and then bend again. Now you might have to rewind this video, but on the Sony camera, that's a lot more intense. And you can kind of see it here too in the, in the sky, but basically if it's in the center of the screen, it's much straighter. If it goes beyond that, it's a lot more distorted. So we're going to take a good look at one of the bigger selling points of the Sony AS100V, and that's its stabilization mode. So on both of these cameras it's activated, but with the GoPro I've switched the field of view to medium. That way it matches what the Sony changes the field of view when you switch to steady mode. So you basically go from 170 to 120. So this is me literally jogging up a mountain. It's super steady on the Sony camera. You're going to notice some weird sort of warping, and especially near the edges you might need to scale up your image just a little bit, but for the most part it's pretty impressive what it's doing. It's doing something similar that I would do in post-production with a lot of expensive software. It just, it looks really good, like I don't mind the warping so much, and then if you had it at 60 frames a second, a lot of that weird sort of jittering in the frames would go away because you'd be losing motion blur. And then if you just switch back to just walking, it's super steady. And you're not losing a ton of detail, you're losing a little field of view but it's definitely worth the cost. Um, it's actually really cool. It's a lot more impressive than it's been in the past, and I might actually use it, and I'm a big naysayer about stabilization. So here we are looking at it again. We're just doing some normal walking, a little slow down, and you know, I just pan over, super smooth. You can look on the GoPro, it's a little shaky, but then we're gonna pan back over, and it's just, it holds up really nice. The big improvement over previous year's model, and just any other camera in general that I've used. As we transition into low light here, this is where Sony has been number one across all helmet cameras that I've ever used. Sony helmet cameras uh, use a, a backlit sort of image sensor that gives it sort of a big edge over low light filming because the image sensor is so small it needs help collecting a lot of light. So this could lead to a lot of streakiness and motion blur, but with the Sony's camera it just sort of handles the whole thing better and it does it without a lot less grain. So you can see right here, Sony's camera has a lot more detail than let's say GoPro's. As we zoom in here, you know, you can see a lot more of the roads, you can see a lot more of the trails and stuff like that. GoPro might have the edge on being a little sharper in this scenario, but I can't see anything. Like with the, the Sony, I can see a lot more, and it looks really nice. And this is just one of the areas where the Sony HDR series is really thinking ahead in the helmet camera market space. Now with GoPro we're kind of getting that grain that we're used to getting in low light situations, but this definitely isn't bad. It's, it's definitely showing that if you have some sort of natural light, these cameras can hold up really well. But again, the Sony with its backlit image sensor is coming out really nice. We're not getting a lot of big clunky grain. Fortunately, I didn't mess with GoPro's new feature where you can actually set the exposure manually and then you can actually set the ISO value manually. So we can potentially reduce the grain value that we have here, but it would also make the image darker. But I was trying to keep everything on sort of an automatic setting. 
these are also controls you won't find in the Sony AS100V. The GoPro is going to allow you to restrict the grain value from, let's say, 6400 ISO to 1600. So you're going to have, again, a lot less, a lot less grain, and you're going to have a lot more control. But you just don't have that control in the Sony camera, even though in this case the automatic settings on the Sony do look better. This is a good shot to look at when we're looking at lens distortion again. If you look at the dome on top of the uh, observatory here, it's supposed to be a perfect sphere. But on the Sony, it looks more like an egg, and that's because of how the lens distortion is handling as it reaches the top and the sides of the frame. It's pushing it a little more just so we can collect more information from the sides. Now, whether or not this is a good or a bad thing is really up to you. Uh, to me, it's just something worth pointing out. We'll do another little audio test in this next section here, so I'll try and keep quiet. So in this shot, it's actually completely dark other than those windows filming. I actually tried to film something on my iPhone as well to kind of show you what is something you can compare to that you might have on you, but it's just unusable. You can't really see anything in the in the iPhone version. So this is actually really impressive that both of these cameras are able to pick up as much as they are, but again, you know, the Sony camera looks a lot better in low light, and that, that color setting is definitely helping it. So if this next session seems a little rushed, it kind of was. It was really cold this day, and my girlfriend was obviously nice enough to help me do this, but it's so cold. Uh, unfortunately, the Sony AS100V is making the same mistake that the Hero 2 had, and it has a bubble lens. Uh, you can buy a flat lens for the Sony camera separately, but at the end of this, my budget was kind of tapped out. So with no contest, the GoPro Hero is just much sharper, and there's a lot more detail, but with the Sony, there's just a lot of blurriness, but what's really nice about the Sony camera is it actually has a scene mode where we can actually choose whether or not we are filming in water. So we've enabled it here just right now. So you're going to notice there's a lot more red in the shot, and it actually kind of bounces out the colors uh, a lot better than, let's say, the GoPro. Unfortunately, I don't have the flat lens, but if I have the flat lens, I'm going to assume it's going to be somewhere closer to what the GoPro is now. I just couldn't tell you one way for sure. And as we came above the water there, you can actually see it kind of trying to compensate for the two colored settings. So the last section we're going to cover in this video is the quality of photos. Now with the Sony AS100V, you're going to be taking 13.5 megapixel photos, and that's a resolution of 4,896 by 2,752, which is basically a 16 by 9 image, and those files are going to be 5.43 megabytes. On the GoPro Hero 3, you have 12 megapixel photos at a resolution of 4,000 by 3,000, which is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and those files are going to be 4.28 megabytes. And what does this mean about the quality of the photos? Not much. Both of the cameras are actually taking really good photos. The only real big difference is, is the GoPro gives you a little more field of view on the top and bottom because it is filming in that 4x3 aspect ratio. But other than that, I think the quality on both of these photos looks fantastic. And here's a more sort of realistic size comparison. Uh, originally I just wanted to give you a good 50-50s to screen real estate, but this is kind of generally what you get. You get more top and bottom with the GoPro and more left and right with the Sony AS100V. Again, I could go in here and be a little nitpicky about the quality of these photos, but for the most part, I think both of them look great. The only area I want to stress importance to is when you're filming uh, time-lapse photos with the Sony AS100V. I don't really have any examples here, but it doesn't actually take photo qualities the same way it does when you're taking still photos. It basically takes still video frames, where it's 1920 by 1080 images that are um, 2 megabytes each, and they kind of look really crappy. Uh, it's really unfortunate that I can't take a time-lapse video using the same quality photos that I do when I'm just using still photography. And also when you press the button to take a photo, it takes the photo instantly. So there's a lot of shakiness in the camera, so you're going to really want to use that remote, which we will go over in another video. Anyway, we've only gone over just some of the video differences in these cameras. There's a lot of other features that we've missed out on. There's a lot of other hardware things we haven't covered. I didn't even mention there's a $100 price difference between the Sony AS100V and the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black. So be sure to subscribe because we're going to have a lot of videos over the next few weeks covering the Sony AS100V as well as some other cameras to compare it against to. And yeah, so if there's anything we missed or haven't covered, there's still a chance for you to see it. Just shoot me an email at markhawkcam at gmail.com or leave a comment in the section below.
And if you've got a video or question you want to share with the community, head on over to reddit.com forward slash r forward slash helmet cameras. I'd love to see what you guys are filming with your AS100Vs and your GoPro Hero 3 Plus Blacks. Anyway, take care everyone, and I'll see you out there. I swear to God if one of you guys call me Kermit the Frog, I'm going to 